Hello, and welcome back, my nostrils, to the Nashville Nose. I'm your host, as always, Dr. Magnificent. <laughs> 2021 is now over. And just like Spotify or Apple Music, this is when we look back at our most played, or in this case, most worn favorites of the year. I was able to narrow down three top fragrances per season, ranked from least to most worn. I'll be honest though, I didn't go through that much in general over the year, considering the times we're living in and how much we spent in the house. I don't wear a lot of fragrances around my girlfriend while we're just chilling at home. She's pretty sensitive to them and I don't wanna make her sneeze herself out of her mind, which is kind of cute, but I don't want to put her through that. So I would mostly just use them if we were going out or meeting up with friends, or I would just decant them into atomizers for fly travel. So let's take a look back at the most used scents I've enjoyed over 2021. The doctor is now in. My stash has grown a lot over the past year. By last spring, I probably had less than half of what I have now. But one of the main players was the first one I got from this house. It's the master of seduction himself, Tom Ford, and the first fragrance I ever bought from him. The ever popular Oud Wood for my third most worn spring scent. I heard a lot about this guy right here and I just went for it at Dillard's one day. I was like, yeah, just go ahead and bag that up. The performance isn't super strong, so it does require quite a few sprays, but it is a one-of-a-kind scent. It's a great blend of wood, sandalwood, Brazilian rosewood, and oud. But this oud is much more of a complimentary note to give it some depth. Don't be scared by the title. It's tucked in the back and not indolic in any way. It's mostly just the other woody notes along with cardamom and Szechuan pepper providing a little spice. Vetiver giving it some earthy subtleties. Then vanilla, amber, and tonka bean to smooth it all out. It's a nice easy wear, but yet it's very sophisticated and distinguished. Oh yeah. Wish it was just a little bit stronger, but it's all good. Definitely works great in the spring and summer because it's still very light, even with the heavier notes in there, and the warm weather will help this push out. My second most worn spring scent is from another big brand, probably the biggest niche house out there, and one I heard a lot about in the beginning of my fragrant Ed Centure. You get it? Ed Adventure, Ed Scent. Yeah. <sighs> it's from the House of Creed, and one of the first ones I got from them as well, it's Green Irish Tweed. I fell in love with this one because it reminded me a lot of classic fougeres. But like I've mentioned before, it's more fresh and sporty than something like Azaro Pour Homme or Dracar Noir or Santos de Cartier. These are much more traditional and old school. But this is more versatile and a scent that I believe can appeal to all ages and styles. Although to some, it's still maybe kind of on the bitter and earthy end if you prefer something a little more easy to grasp like CK1 or, well, Sauvage, of course. But this has the charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent that really piques my interest. I would also vote this the quintessential springtime scent. When you think of spring, you think of green, and leaves filling up trees, and fresh air, and mother nature anew. And this just literally transports you, I mean picks you up and drops you on a rolling green grassy hill in Ireland on a beautiful foggy spring morning. Does that paint a picture for you? But for my number one most worn spring pick, Guerlain Lhomme Ariel Eau de Toilette. I know I mention this line a lot, but all the IDLs are just star studded. I've talked about the EDP before. I love to wear this in the winter and fall. And to me, these two smell very different from one another. I love wearing this EDT in the warm months. Almond, citrus, vetiver, tonka bean, cedar, and just a touch of rosemary and leather tucked in there makes this blend so special. It's fresh and uplifting, yet carries some weight to help the overall performance. Even though it's an EDT, it still lasts a good long time on my skin. I mean, God, if you were to liquefy pure happiness and just put it in a bottle, that's it. There you go. Moving on to summer. My third most worn summer scent must have been Versace Eau Fraiche Man. This, I believe, is the second fragrance I ever bought. As I mentioned in the last video, Jean-Paul Gaultier's La Mal was my first. I got this like six years ago, and it's actually this giant bottle right here. I still have it. <laughs> I was in the mall and I was like, oh, it's only 10 bucks more for twice the amount. So I guess you could say I got my money's worth considering there's still some in there. <laughs> yep sloshing away. It's gotten a bit stale though over the years because I've abused it quite a bit. I kept it in the bathroom, which I didn't know at the time was something you're absolutely not supposed to do. Do not put your fragrances in the bathroom. Don't do it. No, no, back. If your fragrance is in the bathroom, pause this video, get it out of there right now.
wet ass coffee. <laughs> Welcome back if you just returned from the bathroom. Let's continue. So now I've gotten this smaller bottle from my main collection. Now I know how to better take care of it. And I just keep this old bottle in the car for emergency use only, which you're also not supposed to do, but whatever. I guess first learn the rules and then break them. Even though it has fresh in the name, it's not an eau de fresh concentration. It's an eau de toilette. So don't worry, it won't just up and vanish on you. I've never had too much of a problem with performance on this, but it's definitely meant for when it's crazy hot outside. And the heat will definitely help this project. Citrus, star fruit, cardamom, some woods, some herbals, a little bit of amber and musk in the base. Super light and watery, but a sexy, well put together freshie that doesn't smell like shower gel. I'm looking at you, Dylan Blue. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I love Dylan Blue. My second most worn summer scent, I think may have been this one, Hawaii Volcano by Alexandria Fragrances. I've really grown to love these guys. They have great prices for what you're getting, and they're the only perfume house that's actually sent me a thank you message on Instagram for reviewing this very scent. I thought that was very nice, and I like nice people, so I feel extra good shouting them out. But the proof is in the pudding, 100%. I discovered this while I was trying to research a fragrance similar to Creed's Virgin Island Water. I don't know if you've ever tried that one, but it's so, 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 mouth-wateringly good. It's lime, ginger, jasmine, rum, and sugarcane. I sampled it and I was in love, but it completely disappeared after literally 20 minutes. I don't know if that's just my skin chemistry, maybe it's different for you, but I've never felt more upset at a lousy fragrance performance because the smell is just a tropical paradise. And it retails for around 300 bucks. It's a creed. Are they insane? Regardless though, I can't think of a more perfect beach scent than Virgin Island Water. So I was just trying to search and search and scour the planet diligently for something similar that would perform better and maybe at a less sacrilegious price. I was thinking there has to be a Hashivat to Aventus equivalent out there somewhere. So I stumbled on a review somewhere for Hawaii Volcano by Alexandria. I rolled the dice, ordered, hoped for the best, and I don't know what kind of karma I must have put into the universe at some point, but I never get that lucky. It's a nearly dead on scent. Pretty much the exact same notes, but the only difference is this one didn't drain my bank account and then up and ditch me. Oh, she stuck around. She wanted to see what else there was to see. We made breakfast together. She told me all of her hopes and dreams. Hey, if you are that person that really does like long walks on the beach, here's your soulmate right here. We might as well nickname this Virgin Island better. <laughs> But my most worn summer scent of 2021 was my go-to dumb reach, and it is Chanel Allure Homme. I heard a lot of hype about Allure Homme Sport, so this is the one that I got first, and I really like it a lot. But for some reason, I started gravitating more towards this one. Maybe because it has less of a shower gel vibe. Not to say that the Sport just smells like shower gel. It's really well refined and has a lot of class. But this one I feel just has a little more complexity. Some might think it's boring, but on my skin, there's a lot going on. And the notes have a lot going on too. Citrus, peach, ginger, lavender, benzoin, woods, spices, a little bit of florals. Then an interesting leather, vanilla, coconut wrench thrown in the works. It's really elegant and just easy to reach for and splash on if you want to just smell really nice. Hitting fall was fun because I got to bust out the denser scents. My collection had grown by the fall time, but I didn't have near the plethora of deeper, darker blends I have now, which I definitely prefer. But this is my most worn list, not my most favorite list. Keep that in mind. As far as dumb reaches go, this is probably one of the best out there for the fall time. And it's aptly named The One by Dolce & Gabbana. Eau de Parfum, my third most worn fall scent. It's incredibly versatile. It has that everyday designer ease, but still very distinct. Up top, we got grapefruit, coriander, basil, and ginger. But then in the base, you get a nice amber, cedar, and tobacco. And we all know how I feel about tobacco. This is an elusive tobacco though. It's just there to shake things up. It's very nice and very loved. Performance is what you'd expect. Not the best, not the worst. My second most worn fall scent was my go-to Parfums de Marly for when the weather is in that split period between warm and cold. It's Kalan by Parfums de Marly. Is it my favorite Parfums de Marly? No. Was it worth buying? Well, I debated that a lot in my mind because I already had Layton and Pegasus and Pegasus Exclusive and Galloway, and they all, including Kalan, have a similar vibe. So I asked myself if this was redundant, and my first thought was, well, 
At least the bottle is badass. But I've really changed my tune on the scent since I've been using it, especially on the adaptability factor. I feel like it's crisp and bright enough for warm weather with the top note of blood orange. Something I don't see very often, so okay. Points for the unconventional. Then black pepper and other spices along with woods, moss, and amber make it aromatic and weighty enough for the cooler air. I now appreciate it much more than I did, and I think it's one of the most perfect fall scents for when it's still fairly warm. And my number one most worn fall scent was Givenchy Gentlemen, a tie between the EDT and the EDP. So nice and likable, both of these were my ultimate dumb reach for the fall. EDT in the beginning of the fall, EDP a little bit later. They're each very much their own, yet they still smell related. With these, especially at this price, you gotta get both. I acquired a sample sprayer of this like three years ago, and I remember at first whiff I was like, oh my my, oh hell yes! But then I threw it in a drawer and forgot about it. Yet somehow this past summer while I was cleaning the house, I found it! And I was like, oh I remember liking this, I wonder if my more refined and matured palate will still appreciate it. And sure enough, it gave me the same reaction. So if it's love at first sniff and then three years later that love is still strong, it's probably meant to be! And now, finally, my favorite season for spritzing, it's winter scent time! I used to hate the winter until I started getting into the art of perfumery. Now I look forward to busting out these warm, deep, and rich beauties. Getting to finally wear them all is so delightful, even when the weather outside is... Well, you know how it goes. My third most worn winter scent of 2021 was Tobacco Vini, again, by Tom Ford. This was my Christmas fragrance this year. I was trying to decide whether to wear this on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, and ended up just wearing it on both. It's just the perfect holiday scent, and it only comes once a year, so why not? If you missed it, check out my 12 sprays of Christmas video where I talk more in detail about this one, but long story short, at first whiff, it's one I didn't like at all. I thought it smelled like an artificial cinnamon stick wall plug scent. But after being in the world of fragrance for a while, I started to kind of smell it in 3D, so to speak. I could pinpoint the notes better and finally really enjoy the beautiful tobacco note in here, blended with the sweet vanilla, cacao, spices, and dried fruits. So many other fragrance reviewers kept hyping it, so I couldn't fully write it off. There must have been something I was missing. And I'm glad I didn't give up on it, because now I understand and love it so much. It's just gorgeous. My second most worn winter scent was Fan Your Flames by Nishan A. I know, I know, Nishan A has somehow made it into every video I've done so far, but it probably ranks at least top three favorite perfume brands of all time, just on all merits. Smell, performance, and price. I blind bought this. I know, not smart, but I... Oh, just loved it so much. Unlike Tobacco Vanille, this is more on the smoky, ashy side. Kind of reminiscent of the Tobacco Accord and Jazz Club by Mason Margiela. It's more dressed down, if you want to call it that. But I love how this tobacco mixes with the rum and the coconut. It makes it slightly sweet, tropical, and boozy. On originality, I haven't discovered anything quite like this. If you know something that reminds you of this, leave a comment because I'd love to discover more like it. And my number one winter scent of 2021 was yet another Tom Ford. It was Noir Extreme. Wow, I wore a lot of Tom Fords last year. I mean, I'm a fan. I felt very inspired by his fragrances in the beginning, and his was one of the first houses I really dug into off the bat. And this one is just so special and sexy and warm and sensual. I wouldn't call it a dumb reach for the winter, but it's definitely on the sweeter, easier, and more inviting side. And mad props on diversity. It's the only one I know of that uses a coffee accord, which is a traditional ice cream dessert in India. And usually served in unique flavors like saffron and cardamom, which are also no in this blend along with nutmeg and vanilla. So I guess you could call this a gourmand. It's delicious and I think the perfect date night scent. If you're trying to attract someone, you'll probably make them crave you like a tasty treat if you wear this. So there we go, my most worn fragrances of 2021. Thanks for tuning in as always. Please do consider subscribing. And while you're at it, why don't you give us a thumbs up and ding the bell to keep yourself updated on upcoming videos and stay in favor of the algorithm gods. It will bring you good fortune in 2022. And let us know what your top scent of 2021 were in a comment below because you know how it goes it's not just a youtube channel it's a community stay safe stay healthy stay warm and most importantly stay smelly <laughs> the doctor is out